Hi, my name is Ben Taylor, and this is the Vesma Network's TC600D setup and installation video. Step zero, choose between either ECM mode or Ethernet mode. Prior to provisioning, it will need to be determined which mode the unit will be managed in. The unit can either be managed by the embedded cable modem or by the Ethernet port. ECM mode utilizes an embedded cable modem to establish communications with the network and provide web GUI access to the unit for remote users. Ethernet mode requires an Ethernet connection, which could be an external cable modem, connected to the front panel of the, of the Ethernet port, so right here. This allows the TC600D to act as a CPE device and provide web GUI access to remote users. Step one is to complete a site survey. Now most places already have a site survey, so Vesma recommends that you add seven additional steps to your site survey. The first of these is to verify the installation location is properly ventilated. So we want to make sure that there's no obstructions that are preventing the fans from doing their jobs. Next, we want to verify the installation location has appropriate wall mounting space or rack space available. Third, you want to verify an RF drop has sufficient levels and is free from interference. Fourth, you want to verify that there are sufficient AC outlets are available. And five, you want to note the location of every cable modem, digital phone terminal, or digital video box. Six, you want to verify that there are not multiple demarcation points. And finally, for seven, you want to determine if each digital service can be home run or if digital recombining is going to be needed. Step two is to grab equipment from the warehouse. Now for a channel lineup that's going to be two to 36 channels in length, you want to grab one tc 600 If you're using them, you want to grab at least one cable modem. And you want to grab up to 10 cable cards. Now the tc 600 only takes six cable cards, but you want to have four as a backup just to make sure that they all work. For a channel lineup that's going to be 37 to 72 channels in length, you want to grab two tc 600 es as many cable bumps as you need, and up to 20 cable cards. Finally, for a channel lineup that's going to be 73 to 82 channels in length, you want to grab three TC600Ds, up to 30 cable cards, and as many cable modems as you need. Step three in installing the TC600D is to determine which downstream the unit is going to be installed on. Step four in installing the TC600D is to bench the equipment. Now you want to bench the equipment with the correct RF downstream connection available. Why do we do this? We do this to allow us to provision the unit off-site to reduce customer inconvenience. It is highly recommended that you stage the unit prior to departing for the installation. This ensures that you have all the materials necessary for the installation and that the unit is functioning correctly. Staging also allows time to troubleshoot and resolve any cable card related authorization issues. Historically, the vast majority of issues found on initial setup are in regards to improperly authorized or provisioned cable cards. This typically results in frozen or encrypted output. Step five in installing the tc 600 is to install the cable cards. Cable cards will need to be installed in the unit as the tc 600 ships without cable cards. M cards or multi-channel car cable cards are the ones that are required. The unit will need one cable card for every six channels it is configured to decrypt. For example, if 36 channels are mapped and all channels are encrypted, the unit will require six cable cards to be installed. If less than 36 channels are mapped to a system, but the unit is loaded with six cable cards, any unneeded cards will function as backups should any of the active cable cards fail. Note that while some plants will be delivering all clear unencrypted content, each unit will require a minimum of one cable card in order to receive out-of-band system information. Now to install the cable card, you unscrew the front panel, Then slide in the cable card 
and screw the panel back on. And the card is installed. Step six in installing the TC600D is to provision the cable modem. Now you want to provision the cable modem and request the static IPs to be associated with it. Step seven in installing the TC600D is to connect RF to the devices. So you want to connect RF to the TC600D. And if you're using one, you want to connect RF to your modem as well. Step eight is to power up the equipment. So you want to power up the TC600D and of course your cable modem. The cable modem may require port forwarding configuration done at this point to allow traffic to the TC600D. So if you need to do port forwarding, now's the time to do it. Step nine, you want to connect a USB A to B cable with the A part going into the craft interface port on the TC600D and the USB part going into a laptop. This will allow us to serial into the unit. Also critical to serial to serialing into the unit is you'll need to install the USB drivers from Silicon Labs CP210 chipset. You can get these drivers from Vesma or download directly from the Silicon Labs website. Finally, you also need to locate the COM port associated with the USB driver. Now we're going to move on to the settings you'll need to serial into the unit. Step 10. Serial into the device via the CIP. Open your terminal program, either HyperTerm or PuTTY, and connect to the device. To do this, you want to set the serial connection. So go down to Serial. Then we want to switch to the COM port that we found under Device Manager. In this case, because it's an example, we're going to use COM port 1. Then you want to switch the speed or baud rate to 38400. You want to ensure that the data bits are 8, the stop bits are 1, the parity is none, and that the flow control is set to none. Then you can click open and that will begin your session. Step 10, disable the ECM if connecting to an external modem. So in order to disable the embedded cable modem, you want to go to first click configuration, so 1, then you'll do 7 for network, then E to edit, and choose the row you're going to edit. In this case, it's going to be two, since that's where the ECM host is. So I'll edit row two. That's going to be, give me the option for DHCP or static. I'm just going to click past this since we're not dealing with that. Then it will give me the valid options of up or down. So I'm going to choose down by clicking D. And then I'm not going to bother entering in an IP address or a net mask or a broadcast or gateway. and it takes it a second to go through. But once it's done, you'll find that the ECM host, the link status will now be down. So it's currently disabled, which means that you'll be able to use it well with an external cable modem. Step 11 is to set the unit into static IP mode. Now this is entirely optional. You can also use DHCP. In order to do this, you're gonna enter in one for configuration, seven for network, then E to edit a row. Now in this case, we're gonna deal with the host, which is row one. It's gonna offer us DHCP or static. In this case, we're gonna put in static, so S. It's also asking us if it's gonna be up or down, we're gonna choose up. Then I have to enter in the IP address I want. In this case, I'm just going to replicate the IP addresses we already have on here. However, you should enter in whatever IP address you need for the area that you're working in. I don't need a V6 IP address. I'll put in the net mask. I don't need to enter in the broadcast. I'll put in the gateway. Then hit enter. And it will take just a minute but then the static IP will be set, just like that. Step 12 is to adjust the settings on the whitelist. Go to Configuration and Network to find the whitelist. Now, by default, the whitelist is disabled. The reason for this is that the whitelist controls who has access to the unit and who doesn't. If the whitelist is, is enabled, only those IP addresses that are found within the whitelist shown here 
will be able to access the unit. So if you are going to enable the whitelist, it is critical that you ensure that your IP address is found within this list so you can continue to access the unit after the whitelist has been enabled. Step 13, pair and authorize the cable cards. Ensure the TC600E is powered up with cable cards inserted and connected to the plant during the provisioning of the cable cards to ensure that they receive the authorization messages from the DAC or the DNCS. You want to verify all the cards read as validated and show the same channel map. Now pairing information can be found under decryption status. Now decrypt identification also includes cable card information but it does not include the pairing information. Typically a hit or a nit is required to resolve cable card authorization or provisioning issues. In some cases, these commands can take several hours to be sent from the DAC or DNCS, delaying a resolution and extending install times if not properly staged. Contact your provisioning group and provide them with the following information. If using the unit in ECM mode, you want to provide them with the ECM MAC address. The ECM will be provisioned as a data modem for remote access, command control, and monitoring of the TC600E. If using it in Ethernet mode, you want to send the Ethernet MAC address. By default, you'll receive a DHCP IP address, but the, D but the Ethernet port can be statically configured. As the host IP is the address used to manage and connect to the unit, it is recommended if DHCP, DHCP mode is used to make a MAC reservation to ensure the IP remains the same. You want to send the cable card serial numbers. We will get pairing information when the system is powered up in staging or on site. And you want to send the property where the unit is being installed, again to ensure the correct lineup is provided to the property and the billing system can be updated. After the provisioning group has both the MAC address and the cable card serial numbers, you can begin the hardware staging or installation as they add the information to the billing system. If possible, we want the embedded cable modem and the TC600E host to be added to the billing and provisioning systems prior to powering up the unit. This ensures that we can communicate with the unit once it's powered up. Step 14 is to build, verify, and locate the configuration file. So the first thing is to build, verify, and locate the configuration file. Unlike some of our other units, the TC600E does not have a configuration tool of its own. Instead, what one does is change the settings on the, on the TC600E itself, and then the config import export page allows us to export the existing configuration that's on a unit. So basically you set up one unit the way that you need it to go and then you can export that configuration to be imported by other units later. There should be a single configuration file for each region. So that's what we're talking about here. Some installs may need a slightly modified configuration to allow for local insertion by disabling the TC600 output on that local channel. Now the best bet here would be to import the regular configuration and then make the slight changes that you need to at that point. That way you've got all your mappings and all the other settings set up and you can just make the small adjustments you need for one local region. Any customized lineups should be documented and shared back to the group managing configurations and lineups for the TC600E project. Step 15 is to connect a test TV and remember to pad it down. So you want to connect a TV to the output of the combined TC600E units using appropriate padding to reduce power levels from plus 26 dBmV to approximately 0 dBmV to avoid overdriving the TV tuner. So if you're using more than one TC600E, you may need a combiner like this. One way or the other, you will definitely need some padding like this in order to prevent overdriving of the TV tuner. From there, you want to run a channel scan on the TV and verify the services are operational. You want to verify all the channels are there, verify correct video and audio are being seen, and finally, verify that there are no video artifacts. Step 16, install the equipment at the customer location. The unit will need to first be secured to a rack using the provided mounting kit, or you could wall mount the unit using the wall mounting brackets. Second, the unit will need to have the cable plant's RF feed connected to the RF input port in the range of minus 12 to plus 15 dBmV. The optimal input level or sweet spot is plus 7 dBmV. And third, the unit should be connected to, a to the AC power source and allowed to power up and stabilize for at least 7 minutes.
Step 17. Verify the services. Verify services directly out from the unit with appropriate padding in place. Next, connect the RF output port to either an analyzer or a TV and verify the configured channel lineup. Once satisfied, connect the RF output port to the MDU distribution network and verify the levels. If you wish, you can monitor the boot-up sequence of the TC680 using the craft interface port, which can be connected to using a USB A to B cable. The craft interface port, or CIP, is accessible from the front panel of the chassis. Step 18. Combine in property-specific outputs. So at this stage, you want to combine in the output of the equipment into the property distribution. Step 19. Verify levels at the outlets. So you want to verify the levels at an outlet or two within the property. Once you've done that and you make sure that everything's working, you're done installing the TC600E.